Does the order of how we eat our food impact our blood sugar? We've heard time and time again to pair our carbs with fat and protein, but like, can we get more instructions? Are we supposed to eat our fat and protein together with our carbs at the same time? Are we supposed to eat our fat and protein before eating our carbs? Who knows, right? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing another blood sugar experiment where I'm gonna be eating my carbs in two different ways to see which is better for my blood sugar. First, I'm gonna be eating my fat and protein together with my carbs. And then number two, I'm gonna be eating my fat and protein first and then eating my carbs to see which has a better impact on my blood sugar. All right, so day one of this experiment, I'm going to be eating my carbs at the same time as my fat and protein. So I have here the most beautiful, delicious looking lox bagel. I have a jalapeno cheddar bagel toasted with scallion cream cheese, lox, onions, capers, and there were supposed to be cut cucumbers. Maybe they're hidden under the, the locks. It looks like they forgot it. What a bummer. I get so disappointed when my order comes to me incorrectly because I have like such high hopes and expectations for how delicious the meal is gonna be and I want it exactly the way that I ordered it. But it's okay, no cucumbers on this one. Um, but obviously my salmon here is gonna be my protein. My um, cream cheese is gonna be my fat slash protein. Tomatoes and onions and um, capers will provide some fiber. And I'm just gonna eat this holistically together at the same time like a, I guess, normal person would. And then I'm gonna test my blood sugar at the one hour mark and at the two hour mark. I remember when I had gestational diabetes, my blood sugar spiked up to like 180 after having a bagel. Uh, it might've been a bagel and a half that I ate. So since then, I haven't really been letting myself eat bagels very often. I think it's gonna be a train wreck, but the point of this video is to see if there's a difference between eating food like this with the fat and protein at the same time as the carbs or if it's better to eat your fat and protein first and then eat your carbs so either way both ways for me it's gonna be bad so i'm sorry to my body i apologize in advance but let's see if one is better than the other <laughs> Can I just stop and show you the biggest chunk of cream cheese you've ever seen? <laughs> Some people might think that that's gross, but it's so delicious for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm back now to check at the one hour mark. Um, I just like 10 or 15 minutes ago found out some disappointing news. A doctor's appointment that I've been waiting for a while was canceled and I can't reschedule it. So the stress of that might be impacting my blood sugar right now because I'm feeling a little bit stressed out, but also I'm probably feeling stressed out or my body's feeling stressed out because I ate an entire bagel. <laughs> so we are at the one hour. Let's see what my blood sugar reading is. I'm pretty sure it is not gonna be good. That bagel was so good though. It was really, really, really good. Was it worth it at 163? Oh my gosh. My blood sugar spiked 69 points. My blood sugar spiked 69 points in an hour. All right, let's see what happens at the two hour mark. All right, we're back at the two hour mark. I am sitting here, I'm feeding my kiddo a little snack. And you guys can see, it, it looks like mush because that's what it is, but really, really balanced meal snack idea for your kiddo. I have coconut milk, I have whole milk, um, Greek yogurt, I have hemp seeds, I have flax seeds and applesauce. And let me think if that's it. Yep, that's it. The coconut milk really punches up the fat. So does the whole milk. My kiddo is very, very underweight. He's actually less than first percentile in weight, which makes me really sad. So I'm just trying to feed him as much fat as possible, which is why I have the coconut cream. And let me check my blood sugar. I'm feeling a little bit more zen from 
the stress that I was telling you about earlier today with the doctor's appointment being canceled. So um, now that we're at the two hour mark, let's see if it's come down. An hour ago, my blood sugar was at 163. Oh my gosh, it's at 175. 175 at the two hour mark. That is horrendously bad. This is why I can't eat bagels. I cannot not eat bagels. And if I do, I most definitely can't eat the whole thing. Uh, maybe I can get away with eating half, but uh, interestingly, my body feels totally fine, totally normal. My heart rate is not going like it usually does. Um, I'm not feeling any like tingling in my feet or my fingers. And I think this is why monitoring your blood sugar is important because you can't go by feeling alone. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm at 175 at two hours. So now I'm definitely gonna have to check at three hours to see where I'm at. Um, but this is worse actually than I imagined. And I'm actually dreading eating another whole bagel again to, to finish off this experiment because my body is struggling. Well, the damage is done. I'll show you guys where I'm at in three hours. What am I doing to my body? What am I doing, Micah? Uh. I know. Okay, I'm a couple minutes late, a little bit after three hours. Oh, I cannot believe my blood sugar was at 175 at the two hour mark. That was honestly just incredibly shocking. So now we are at the three hour mark and I'm really hoping that it's coming back down. Uh, uh. And it is, it's at 134. So uh. you want this? So still clearly really, really elevated. Do you guys want to just go with me all the way? Let's check again at the four hour mark. I'm just really curious to see like how long it's going to take for me to come back down. So again, I'll see you guys soon. Shake, shake. All right, I am back for my four hour test. Let's hope that this is really the last hour that I have to check. My blood sugar has been crazy and I'm really hoping that it's back to normal. Last time it was at 134. Okay, four hours in, let this be my last. Please help me be relatively back to baseline, 106. Okay, so uh, that's good enough for me. My original starting point, I believe was at 94. So it took me four full hours. Ooh, I feel tired, I'm super thirsty. I don't know if it's in my head, but I just feel like my body's been through the ringer. So I can't believe I'm gonna have to do this again, but let's see what happens when I switch things up and I eat my protein and fat first and then eat my carb last. All right, so I am back to the scene of the crime and honestly, I'm dreading this because my body really suffered the other day. But for the sake of science, I have to do this again. I have my bagel here and I'm gonna walk over and find a place to sit and let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check my blood sugar first here. And I am outside, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. There is some wind, there is some traffic behind me. So we'll do the best that we can. So my blood sugar is at, oh, 107. So it's actually a lot higher than it was the other day. Um, so we'll have to take that into consideration. And honestly, eating this bagel, all like deconstructed is not going to taste very good but i was planning on doing this experiment with sushi where i was going to eat like all the fish off of the sushi first and then eat the rice later but then the thought of eating like leftover fishy rice by itself just sounded so unappetizing so you know what this is not that bad so yeah let's go ahead and start eating this bagel i opened up my box with the bagel in it and this time there's no onions ah! I'm hoping that the lack of onions isn't gonna make too big of a difference. I don't think that it will. We're gonna make do. Let's see what the results are at the one and two hour mark. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this. Onions make a lox bagel, don't you think? So 
I ate my lox and my tomatoes and I scraped off as much of the cheese as I possibly could and ate that. So now I'm going to work on the bread. So I just finished my bagel and actually it was still pretty tasty. The um, lox by itself with the cream cheese was really, really good. The bagel by itself, it was a little bit harder to get down because it was dry without any cream cheese, but the jalapenos and the cheddar made it pretty bearable. So it was not so bad. My husband, I love him so much. He is walking over to grab the car and he's gonna swing by to pick me up because I didn't want to walk over there and have it impact my blood sugar reading. So I'm just gonna wait for him and then hop back in the car and I'll check back in with you guys for my one hour reading. My toes are tingling. My toes are feeling a little bit sore, which happens sometimes when my blood sugar is high. I did not experience this at all yesterday, even though my blood sugar had spiked 69 points at the one hour mark. So uh, does that mean that it's gonna be worse? Today, I am at 132. It's only spiked 25 points so far. Weird though that I'm feeling it more physically in my body. But um, I mean, I did eat the protein and the fat first, so I'm assuming like the bagel hasn't really fully digested yet since I ate that a little bit later. So probably for my two hour mark, it's gonna be a lot higher. But so far, 69 points versus 25 points, significant difference. All right, back for my two hour check now. My toes are still feeling tingly and strange. Um, and I'm super, super tired, like falling asleep tired. Okay, so I was at 132 an hour ago. I am now at 156. Okay, so not ideal. 156 at the two hour mark is much, much, much too high. But you know what? 156 versus 175? So far, eating the fat and the protein first before the carbs is making a significant difference. I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm gonna check again at the three hour mark and I'm gonna check again at the four hour mark, just like I did the other day to continue comparing side by side what the numbers are. But this hack is truly working as of now. So I'm excited to see that. All right, testing my blood sugar on the go really quick for my three hour test. Hmm? Mommy. 145. Okay, I don't have my um, data from last time, so I can't remember where I was at at the four hour mark. I think I might've been at 134, something like that. So right now I'm at 145. All right, so I'm gonna do my four hour check really, really quickly here before I run out the door. I'm hoping that it comes down to baseline at this point. So let's see, okay, 105, perfect. So I'm back down where I started. I'm going to create a graph and compare all of my numbers and come back to you with some findings and conclusions that I've drawn. So I will see you then. All right, so let me throw up my comparison graph here. Based on the visual, we can clearly see that eating the fat and protein before the carbs had a better impact on my blood sugar. When I ate the bagel with the fat and protein, my blood sugar spiked a whopping 81 points that peaked at the two hour mark. And when I ate the fat and protein before eating the bagel, my blood sugar spiked a total of 49 points. But let's not get it twisted. In both of these scenarios, my blood sugar went up way higher than it should have, and 100% guarantee I did damage to my body during this blood sugar experiment, especially given that it took four full hours for my blood sugar to return back to baseline. Just because I can see that my body did better when I ate the fat and protein first does not by any means mean that I should be eating an entire bagel in one sitting. But I do know that I have another blood sugar hack in my back pocket just in case I need it. But to be honest, I'm feeling a little bit conflicted about this blood sugar hack. To me, it feels like it's kind of bordering on disordered eating to like scrape off all of the cream cheese from my bagel to eat it first as opposed to with my bagel. I don't know, it just feels a little bit like an eating ritual, which I'm not super comfortable with. Although I guess I already have been kind of using this hack in more quote unquote normal ways. So for example, for breakfast, I often eat 
eat two eggs, half an avocado, and a small piece of sourdough toast. And I always just eat the eggs and the avocado first and then save my bread for last, which feels a little bit more healthy to me as opposed to let's say if I went somewhere and I ordered a sandwich and then I ate like all the insides, like the meat and the veggies and the cheese first, and then I ate the bread after that, I think feels a little bit unsettling to me. Or like I had mentioned before, if I went to a sushi restaurant and then I ate all of the fish off of my sushi, first and then ate my rice. To me, I think that would feel a little bit off personally. I just think that while we have to be mindful of our blood sugar, I just don't want to become obsessive about what I eat and how I eat it because I have been down that path before and it was really, really bad for my mental health. So take that for whatever it's worth. I do believe that we can all trust ourselves to make the best decisions for our own bodies. So there you go. All right, so thank you so much for joining me for another blood sugar experiment video. And if you haven't checked out my channel, I do have other blood sugar experiments, such as testing the effects of white rice versus brown rice or regular pasta versus chickpea pasta on my blood sugar. So if that interests you, go ahead and check those out. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. And please leave down in the comments below if there are other blood sugar related videos that you'd like to see. All right, I hope to see you guys all next time. Bye.